QuickBooks Online 2021, reversing entry related to accounts receivable, sales, or revenue within QuickBooks. Let's get into it with Intuit, QuickBooks Online 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We're gonna start off opening up our financial statements by duplicating some tabs up top, right-clicking on the tab up top, duplicate. We're gonna do this two more times. Right-click on the tab up top, duplicate. Right-click on the tab up top, duplicate then we're going to open up our trial balance then our profit and loss and balance sheet reports so we'll go to the reports down on the left hand side we're going to start off opening up the trial balance by searching in the fine field for the good old tb the good old trial balance so we're going to say trial balance open that up we're going to range change it up top ending point being 022821 and then we will go ahead and run that report Close up the hamburger, hold down control, scroll up just a bit to get up to that 125%. Next tab to the left, we're then going to go to the reports at the bottom left hand side. Scrolling back up once again, oh, I'm sorry, not scrolling back up yet. We're going to open up the income statement, income statement report. Now scrolling up, range change at the end at 0.22821. Run that report, close up the hamburger. Next report on the tab to the left is going to be the balance sheet. So we're going to go on down to the reports on the left-hand side. Open up the good old and favorite of the balance sheet report. Range change up top ending at 022821. Run that report. Close up the hamburger. And now we're going to be entering our reversing entry. So we did this in Excel in the prior presentation. The quick recap is that we had a transaction that was an invoice. The invoice was entered in after the cutoff, which in our case was March 5th. And now we want to bring the invoice back into the current period. Or we did bring the invoice back into the current period before the cutoff because the work was actually done before the cutoff, even though the invoice was entered after the cutoff, that being the uh, February 28th, 2021, the cutoff date. So then we entered, for example, in our accounts receivable here, we have our adjusting entry. So this is going to be our adjusting entry, which is journal entry three up top. And that's going to be our adjusting entry, pulling it back into the accounts receivable. We'll see similar activity in the sales and so on. And then the actual invoice took place. If I bring this out to the fifth, we bring this out to the fifth we have this actual invoice here. So as of uh, March 5th, it will be in there two times. So we had to bring it back before the cutoff date to be proper under an, an accrual method. But now it's in there two times if we get past March 5th. So we got to reverse it. We're not going to reverse it as of March 5th, although you might think that because we want all of our reversing entries to be in there as of the first day after the cutoff. So we're going to reverse it like all other reversing entries on March 1st. So we're going to go back up top and go back to our uh, balance sheet. We won't go into much more of the recap because we did the recap in the Excel worksheet last time. So we entered this into the Excel worksheet. We have these two entries, which are the reversing entries. This was the adjusting entry up top. We simply reversed it exactly. We're now going to be entering this reversing entry into QuickBooks. Once again, I'm going to unblue. I'm going to ungreen this one for now. Make this the standard blue. And uh, then notice that uh, once again, we're going to do this with a journal entry because it's a bit more complex than using a register. So we used a register when we entered these top two into QuickBooks and it was still a journal entry, but we used a register format to do so. If you have over two accounts, and especially when you have some of these complex accounts with a sub ledger, then it can be somewhat complicated. Also remember that when we do this in an adjusting entry in a book problem, or if you're doing this basically um, in an accounting department just to make the financials correct or for taxes, you do not run into the same is issues that you have when you put this into QuickBooks, which you want to understand before you put it into QuickBooks so that you can make the life easy for the bookkeeper. You don't want to mess up. You don't want to mess anything up for the normal accounting process. And those problems include the fact that this accounts receivable, if I hit the actual accounts receivable account, needs a customer related to it or else they won't be able to... to record it to the accounts receivable account. If you just give this to an, an accounting a bookkeeper or something, they might try to enter it and then they're gonna say, hey, I don't know what account to hit with it. Uh, there's two ways around that. One, you give the account and you'll have an in and an out for the adjusting entry and reversing entry under that account customer, or you set up this accounts receivable as a separate account, not as an accounts receivable type of account, 
but as an other accounts receivable simply for the adjustment to be taken place and then reversed. So we're going to use the first method. And then we have the sales tax, same issue here or similar issue in that QuickBooks, you don't want to mess up the sales tax line for QuickBooks because QuickBooks is the one that tracks the tax per location. And so what we want to do is just have kind of like a generic sales tax account that won't mess up the normal accounting process within QuickBooks for the collection and then payment of the sales tax. So we set up another account to do that there. And the inventory has a sub ledger as well, which doesn't have the same issue with the accounts receivable, but it still has this ledger that we need to make sure is in reconciliation after our adjusting and reversing entry. Once we enter this reversing entry, it should be then back in reconciliation. So we're just going to go back to QuickBooks and enter this uh, in the system. So we'll go back on over and we're going to go to the first tab to do so. First tab, we're going to go to the new button and just go down to the journal entry. So we're going to be entering a journal entry. This one, like all uh, reversing entries, we're going to enter as of the first day of the following period, that being 030121. And then we're going to say, just copy this down. It's going to be accounts receivable. Accounts receivable. We're going to use the actual accounts receivable account. And then we're going to have to then uh, say that's going to be for the 399. It's going to be a credit because we're reversing what happens with an invoice credit. And I'm going to call this, we're going to call this thing RJE, RJE number four. This should be number four. RJE number four, let's say. Let's put it up top. RJE four. And that should then populate for all of the descriptions. Let's see if that pulls over for all the descriptions or whether or not I have to put the descriptions here. So I'll, I'll leave it for now. And then this is going to be for Anderson. So this was for Mr. Anderson guitars. And then the other side is going to the sales. So that's going to be our income account, sales of products, revenue, income, sales of product, income account that's going to be the debit but it was for the 100 or 380 so that's for the 380 don't need to have any name over here and then we need the sales tax which i set up another account for that's not the one that's used for the, the normal sales tax within quickbooks that's the california department and so on that's who we pay in, in our example farm problem so there it is that's for the 19 and so we don't need any name or special thing over here. Then we might skip a line just so it so we can see it in our case uh, as kind of like a another journal entry that's within the same journal entry format here. That's going to be then the cost of goods sold, 304. Cost of goods sold and credit for the 304. Notice how I'm, I'm reversing this exactly and, and in order of top to bottom and just having the credits and debits opposite. That's the easiest way to do it i believe instead of reversing the debits and credits which is not easy i don't think maybe my mind just gets mixed up but i'm sure that's the case but in any case your mind might get mixed up too so so this is going to be inventory inventory and so there we have that and that'll be in this doesn't need to have any sub ledger we don't have any like item that we need to be hitting for the inventory uh, either here, although again, because we do not, we got to be careful that we don't throw off the sub ledgers related to inventory. So this is as of 3-1, remember? That's the reversing entry. That's important. So we're going to then say save it and close it. Save it, close it, and then we'll check it out. We're going to go to the balance sheet and let's bring this up to uh, the next time period. Let's bring it up to 3-1 run the report and see what we have if i go down to the accounts receivable for example and go on down we're going to say then that we have there's our adjusting entry there's our reversing entry that reverses it back out and then if i bring this up to three five when the actual invoice was made then we'll see the invoice too which will be super neat and so there we have it so then we have so here's the here's the uh the journal entry and then we reverse it, so we're back to where we kind of were before, even though this reversing entry is after the cutoff, so it's in the next month. And then we had the actual invoice that happened, which now the invoice is kind of taking precedent, given the fact that these two should then cancel each other out. Scrolling back up top, going back then to the uh, balance sheet, 
Let's go to the income statement, other sides on the income statement. So we could see this in a couple different ways, but it's probably most clear uh, to see this as of, if I run the report as of 030121 to let's say 030121, just that one day, because then we'll see just our reversing entry. So we have the negative sales that took place and then basically the negative cost of goods sold. If I go into that sales item, there's my reversing entry. If I change the dates up top, one day back to prior so that's prior to the the cutoff date and then let's bring this up to the fifth then we're going to say all right now i've got the whole range here so now we've got 228 there's my adjusted entry bringing it before the cutoff last in the month before we before you know the month end and then we reverse it right after the cutoff now it's back to zero even though these two things affect two different months on the income statement and then we have the actual invoice which records it kind of where it was, where it starts back out. These two kind of cancel out in that case. And then in, as of March, then it's actually zero in March because these two things are in March. So they cancel each other out. And it was actually recorded then in February, even though it was reversed then in March. And then the actual invoice was in March. So if I go back up top and then go back, then we, we're going to see a similar kind of thing. If I go back to the balance sheet, for the uh the the uh the difference which is the tax so the tax i put into this separate account so that we don't mess up the sales tax calculation if we go into the sales tax then we see once again our adjusting entry here and then our reversing entry going back up top then we can check out the inventory so inventory and why wouldn't we sounds like good times so i'm going to scroll in just a little bit and there's the inventory if we go into the inventory and scroll down and there's the adjusting entry and then the reversing entry for the inventory and then once again if i bring this back up to the 5th march 5th to see the actual invoice now we have the the adjusting entry the reversing entry which brings us back to the starting point and there's the actual invoice so that we don't enter it like um, uh, two times in that case right so we have the actual invoice here uh, the actual invoice here taking down yeah the inventory and then the adjusting entry and the reversing entry all right going back up top then the other side of that is on the cost of goods sold so if i go back on over to the income statement here's the cost of goods sold the 304 and that's going to be our reversing entry as of 31 so there's a reversing entry if we if we take it back a day back to the prior month uh, take it back to the prior month and then forward to to three five we see our activity here is the journal entry that brings it back into the prior month so that brings it back into february then we reverse it in march and then here's the original invoice these two canceling out in march as of three five so that we actually recorded it basically in uh Mar in february because that's when the work took place scrolling back up going back then to the profit and loss report let's go back to the balance sheet here and then check out our accounts receivable sub ledgers so i'm going to go back to to the last tab right click on it and duplicate that tab right click on this tab duplicate the tab we're looking at the accounts receivable sub ledger to see what happened with the activity for mr anderson our client our customer that uh, it's always mr anderson having these problems it's, so then we're going to go down to the reports down below on the left hand side and we're scrolling down to who owes you money who owes you we're after you mr anderson and we want the customer balance detail report and then if we go back up top i'm going to minimize this report so here's what we have now then we have these two journal entries right and they cancel each other out so they kind of cancel each other out but we still see the activity in this report and then the invoice here is the original amount that was entered in the invoice so we're back to where we start but it does kind of mess up the bookkeeper in that these two are like kind of muddying up their customer balance detailed report once again to get around that you could just have another account called accounts receivable and set it up as an other current live other current asset instead of an accounts receivable type of account and then have this activity in that account to reflect our adjustment and not affect the sub ledger at all in that case so that's a, another workaround you can kind of do if i if i go to the bottom of this then uh, we've got the 13872 if i go back to the balance sheet and i bring this back out to march 5th 
So, and that's when we, as of the point we entered the invoice, we got the 13,872. So we're back to where we should be as of, as of that point in time and everything is kind of netted out. And then on the inventory, we have a similar issue on the inventory. So let's go to the inventory or the last report, right click on it, duplicate the tab again. And now let's look at the inventory subledger. Go into the reports on the left hand side. We're going to look at the inventory valuation summary. Inventory, because we want to we want to see the valuation of the inventory. And this is the report that does it, the inventory valuation summary. Changing the date up top. Now, if I change the date to 022821 and run this report, that's our cutoff date. Now we're at the 1248. If I go back to the balance sheet and I run this for the cutoff date, 022821 running that report we should be out of balance we're actually out because this is 1944 the sub report is at 1248 but if i run this report for 030521 run it here uh 030521 we're at the 944 if i go back over here and i run this for 030521 run this report then we're at the 944 and the 944. So that's because when, we, when I entered the adjusting entry, we did an, an entry that affected the parent account here, the inventory on the balance sheet, but not the sub report because I didn't name an inventory item because I, I can't unless I do an actual invoice. And then we, and then, so that threw us off and then we reversed it. So then we were back on once we reversed it. So after the reversing entry, we should be okay with that. Now let's take a look at the income statement one more time. Let's take a look at the good old income statement here. That's this one. And run this for, let's make it uh, 010121 to 022821. Run this report and just see if it ties out to our, our uh, worksheet. So we got the 103985. If we go to our worksheet, scrolling down, we got the 10 here, right? There's, there's our adjusted balance. Um, as of 228, the 10, 349, 85 and the 10, 349, 85. And then if I, if I look at it, adding one more day, so I run the report, including the reversing entry here on the income statement. So I bring it up a day. Now we've got our reversing entry included scrolling down. We're at the 10, 3, 3, 0, 1, 0. So the 10, 3, 3, 0, 1, 0. By the way, this will only work in QuickBooks if there were no other transactions. If you if you did this in QuickBooks, if there were no other transactions on March 1st, if there are other transactions other than the reversing entry, then you know those will be affecting as well. And then if I run this report for just March, say say I make this 030121, run that report, and then I say now I've got a negative 1975 just for March 1st, just our reversing entries. And I go back on over here. We're at the 1975 in, in our worksheet as well. So you can kind of go back and forth and see how all that ties out. You can see how much more kind of uh, overwhelming, I guess, the, the Excel sheet can be, but how much more transparent it is than jumping back and forth from the reports and whatnot and the dates that kind of just magically change the numbers over here in Excel. So if you can understand those Excel worksheets, it's actually... Um, you'll have a good understanding of it. Let's go to the trial balance now and just run the trial balance. This is as of um, the cutoff date. This is where we stand as of uh, this point in time. Maybe I should run it for 03 since this is a reversing entry. 03, 0121 to 030121 running that report. Now, once again, it's not going to close out everything down below. So we might as well run this from... 010121 to 030121. So this is where we stand for that date range. And you can check that out to your numbers. We'll also print this out so you can look at it on your own time.